Hi everyone, so in today's video, uh, this is going to be a bit more of a problem solving strategy video. So in previous videos, I've kind of broken down the problem solving question types into three. Now I just want to go one step further and break it down into 10 more specific types of questions. I'll put a quick list of what those questions are up here. Um, so I'm going to take a bit of time to walk you through each one turn by turn. What this should accomplish for you is that you can familiarize yourself with what, when you're looking at the question, what you're dealing with. Most importantly, you're not going to find each type of question uh, as difficult as the other. Some will take shorter lengths of time, some will take longer. So what you need to do is figure out which of these you're most comfortable with. And if there is something that is a bit of a pain spot for you, then just fix that before you get into the exam. So today I'm just going to give an overview and just go through one example of each question. But if there is a question type that you are struggling with more, please feel free to leave a comment and I can go through that in more detail. Right, so taking you through an example of the first type of question I've pointed out to you. So that one's going to be all about interpreting graphs. Now, with graphs, what you're most likely to see, well, it's going to be your bar charts, it's going to be pie charts, just your typical things that, uh, you know, you see, in, you, you see all the time. So there's not a huge number of mistakes or anything to really look out for here. The only thing is if they're trying to get you to extract or manipulate any information, then you just need to be really confident what you're working with. So one thing that does come up a bit and, you know, could potentially be confusing is cumulative percentages. So I've just got an example for you here. So cumulative percentages, obviously how they work is that um, up three grams or less uh, is going to be consumed by 3% of women and 1% of men. And then here, six grams or less, 30% of women consume six grams or less. Now, bear in mind, you do not add these two. So these are actually, um, that is actually going to be the total. So under that, um, within this uh, category here, 36 grams or less, 30%, this is included in here. Same for here, 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 here. So I hope that's nice and clear for you. Now, let's look at the other information we're given. So we're told that assuming equal numbers of men and women in the population, what percentage of all people consumed above the recommended level of six grams per day? Give your answer to the nearest 1%. So we want this group here, basically. And we're told that there are equal numbers of men and women. That's very useful for us because what that means is we can take um, 200 percentage as being all of the population and then basically divide through by two to find our final answer. So if we just add up these here, um, 11 and 30, then 41% consume uh, under this and above is the remaining. So it would just be 200 minus 41 to give us 159. We have to now divide by two to find the average and that's going to be to the nearest percentage, 80%. So our answer in this case would be D. So with reading graphs, just make sure you go through an example of each one, be that pie chart, be that bar chart, and just make sure you're super, super comfortable with every type of interpreting graph question that could come up. There aren't too many curveballs that they can throw you here. I think one thing maybe to look out for is the moving average graph, because I know that can be somewhat unfamiliar if you haven't come across that before. So the moving average, um, I believe a couple of times that's come up in previous papers. So it would definitely be worth um, going through that if you haven't done so. I'll try and make a more comprehensive list of all the different types of graphs that you will come across so that you can run through it in a little checklist. Okay, so onto the second question type now. So in the second question, uh, basically what you're looking out for are the questions that involve very simple kind of processes that you would see in mainly GCSE mathematics. So maybe the highest common factors, multiples, fractions, ratios, percentages, all of these sort of things where they want you to process some information. Now, obviously this is going to be the easiest for you to be familiarizing yourself with beforehand and make sure you're really quick and confident with it. Again, I will try to post a more comprehensive list uh, with everything that you should know and uh, what you should be revising. But for now, let's go through a question example. So I'm being given the question, I'm going to treat my lawn with green grass liquid food. The instructions tell me to dilute one part green grass, uh, green grass with 15 parts water. Uh, three hours later, the treatment should be repeated, but a mixture of one part green grass and 24 part water. I have worked out that I need a total of 12 liters of diluted liquid for each application. So how much green grass am I using altogether today? Now, if you're, well, you've already practiced this, then you should recognize this immediately as a ratios question. So in application number one, we need a mixture of one part Greek grass to 15 part water. And then in application number two, we're looking at one part Greek grass to 24 part, 24 part water. sorry. And each time we're looking at 12 liters that we need to 
create in total. So knowing your ratios, all you need to really do is you're looking at 12 over 16 in that first application is going to be uh, made up of water. And then in the second uh, case, you're basically looking at 12 over 24 is going to be, uh, 25, sorry, is what you're looking at in terms of the uh, amount of Greek grass. So all you then need to do is add these two together. Now, so for the 12 over 16, this is quite simply 0 0.75, because it's three over four. Um, so that's gonna be 750 mil. At the same time, we need our 12 over 25. Now, um, one over 25 is 0 0.04. You multiply that through by 12 to give you uh, 480 milliliters. And then we just wanna add those two together. And that should give us 1,230 milliliters in total. So our answer here is going to be B. So familiarity with ratios, fractions, all of these sorts of things will get you through these questions much quicker because you don't need much time to work it out. You just know what you need to do. You do the process and you're right moving along straight away. So do take some time to go through these process questions and make sure you're really, really comfortable there. Really familiar with the 24 hour clock as well as um, just the uh, normal clocks. And then oh, what's the name of the normal clocks? <laughs> Well, right, so the third type of question that you should familiarize yourself with are the time questions. Now, time questions can come up in lots of different ways, but they do tend to come up at least two or three times every paper. So it'd be good, I think, to prepare yourself in terms of knowing your 12 and 24 hour clocks and knowing also that 15 minutes is a quarter, you know, these sorts of things, just to make sure that you can move through fairly quickly. But again, none of these tend to be that complicated. Maybe uh, get used to time zones and how that works as well, because that is also a very common question type. So here we're looking at an airplane flight crew starting its day in Rome, and it does two round trips, meaning that they go to London and then back to London and then back again. And then at each arrival at the airport, they take the next scheduled flight back. The timetable is shown below. How long is the time taken from first flight to landing on their last flight of the day? Now, again, um, if you're familiar with time and how to, how to work with it, there should be no problem at all. So we're starting in Rome, so we'll take that 9.05, that's going to be our starting time, and we have to find what is our landing time and then work out the difference. So 9 to 9.55 London, we're then able to take this flight here to arrive in Rome at 1.45. We then miss the 12.05, so we take the 3.05, landing in London at 3.55, one final flight back home, this 4.30 flight arriving at 7.45, um, so 19.45. Um, so the difference here is of course going to be 10 hours and 40 minutes, meaning that the answer is D. So time constraint ones, if you're comfortable with time zones, times, things like that, again, these should be pretty nice, easy ones to jump through. Right, so question type four, and possibly the easiest one to get used to, is what I'm going to call the elimination with constraints question. So it, this is such a typical question that comes up, and it, just something to really reset yourself when you're in that exam, because you can be really sure about it. So what they do is they give you a lot of information, and often, you know, some people uh, are being given a prize or a homework award or, a, you know, whatever performance bonus or something, or the best roller coaster or whatever it is. And they give you a list of conditions. And it's usually, obviously it is contained in this area here. And this is where all the information is presented. And then we have to pick somebody who gets the all round performance prize. What I like to do personally is either to highlight inside here all the constraints or just to write them out, just to make sure you're not actually missing anything. So if we look here, a youth center runs a number of football teams for boys of different ages. Each season, one is given the best all-round performance. Five have been nominated. This manager has decided to reward, not to reward any player. So this is something that cannot be the case. Not to reward any player who has missed two consecutive training sessions. So two training sessions plus miss is a no. And the manager will also exclude anyone who has failed to score a goal from a penalty kick more than uh, two times. So two penalties missed, no. And then finally, after these criteria, whoever has scored the highest number of goals. So again, very familiar question. I'm sure you've seen this come up multiple times. So we'll just go through in turn. We'll look at which one is most important. That first column, we do not need. <clears throat> this one we also don't need. So we're just looking at the remaining. Number of times missed two consecutive training sessions. The only person excluded is Graham down here. So he's out. Then we need to look at both of these little sections here, none of number of penalty kicks taken and number of penalty scoring goals. So the difference cannot be greater than two, immediately excluding David and also excluding uh, Colin. 
So out of John and Mike, who has scored more most goals? Well, it's going to be Mike, so the answer is D. And that is simple as you like, 20, 30 seconds, you know, just run through it and then you're ready to move on to the next question. Right guys, so the fifth type of question that you may be asked is to find the cheapest or the most expensive, basically minimums and maximums using materials. So materials could be pieces of ribbon, it could be lengths of wood, it could be um, different bags of you know, soil, whatever it is. It's usually in kilograms or centimeters and they usually give you a fair amount of information. So the things to watch out for, first of all, let's work out what the conditions are that we have to find. So we need, in this case, a depth of at least 40 centimeters. Depth is given here. So we're going to knock out this column here and the shelves have to be 1.8 meters long and we need five of them. Um, then in these questions they usually give you an additional bit of information which basically says oh you cannot cut the ribbon and then use the scrap and join it with another scrap to make the thing. And it's usually the same condition every time so watch out for that one. Now um, in this case as well we're saying Fiona can cut pieces of wood to make more than one piece of the correct size but she wants each of the shelves to be made from a complete piece of wood. As I said, this is the most common condition. It always comes up, so watch out for it. So that means, basically, we're left with this information so far. Let's see if we can cut out more. So obviously, this is also deep enough, but if you look, every price in here is more expensive than the 45, so we'll just knock that one out too. Being that it has to be 1.8 and we can't randomly join things up, we can then also cut out this information here. And then, uh, being that we cannot put together scraps from each piece to make a longer piece of wood, we'll just cut out this one as well, because from the three you can also only make one piece. So we're left with this one here and this one here. We'll then just look at which one's cheaper. So of course the four meter length makes two, and then the two meter makes one. If you multiply this by two, it gives you a number bigger than this. So we know that we want to use the four meter one as much as possible. So basically we're going to do four meter wood times two, plus one of the two meter woods. So now the sum becomes very simple. We just have to do $9.30 times 2, which gives us $18.60. And then we want to add on $4.95, which is going to give us $23.55. So the answer will be here, C. So with these questions, just really watch out for the secret condition that is usually the same. Make sure you're only focused on the correct and useful information by cutting out as you go along. And then just make sure you've looked carefully at all the conditions. There won't be many, but just be systematic about it and work through one by one. Again, this kind of question we do like, but, uh, and then finally, sorry, I should mention that because you're given information like this, always try and put it into the same, like a comparable thing. So obviously the two and the four are not directly comparable. So you want to make these figures so that we can see immediately which one's more expensive or cheaper. Thank you.